This is the Blackout Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Blackout Podcast where I get to talk to amazing people that do amazing things. And today I have Sandrella Moana. Got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to the Blackout Thanks Podcast. For having me. Um Tell me a bit more about yourself. Okay. In general? General. Anything? Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. This could be a while. Uh, Let's see. (laughs) Um, I was born in Halifax, and I'm Lebanese. My parents moved here from Lebanon, and I was born here. I have an older sister. She was born in Lebanon, and they moved here during the Civil War. Um, I'm married, and I have a daughter who will be 10 in September. Mm. And I love cats. I have three cats. I still say that. My cat Rocky died a couple months ago, but he's still in the house. Mm. That's weird. He, <laughs> he's, he's, you know, we had his ashes. And so, oh, so we the have the ashes little box. In the thing. Gotcha, yeah, and his gotcha, name okay. and his photo. Anyway. And then my cats, Polka and Coco. How old was he actually? 15. Oh, and wow. His sister Polka's 15. She's still with us. And then Coco's six. So, how long, like, what's the average age of cats? Um, you know, for indoor cats, they're indoor cats. They can go to like 20, 20 to 24. That's like kind of on the older side, but wow. um, over 10, they're considered seniors anyway. So, so and, like they don't run around much and stuff. Uh, Coco's still crazy. She's only six. Polka's okay. She's, yeah, she's pretty, yeah, she doesn't, but she likes to sleep a lot. But um, I think having the younger cat keeps her active because she chases her, so Polka runs away from her. So. <laughs> but she's 15. They're considered geriatric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. And um, I don't know. I have a BA in French and Spanish from Dalhousie. And, you know, that <laughs> I don't like to say things are a waste of time because you always learn when you're, you know. But basically, yeah, <laughs> don't so, get a BA by itself. That's my advice. Why not? <laughs> well, you know, I think it's hard to find a career just with a Bachelor of Arts in French and Spanish. Oh, okay. If you well, don't have something on top of it, like a BEG gotcha, or teaching gotcha, gotcha, or gotcha, gotcha. something. You know? Why did you decide to study that when you did? Uh, I've always liked languages. So growing up here, my parents spoke Arabic at home. So mm. Arabic was my first language. And, um, you know, in school, I, we didn't have French immersion when I was taking school, but I loved French. So I continued that in university, I decided to major in French, and then mm. I took up Spanish. Um, I took German in high school as well, but I prefer the Romance languages. So I majored in Spanish and French, mm. which was great. I got to travel to France and Spain and live there abroad while I was doing my studies. Oh, and wow. How long did you leave for? Um... We lived in France for about eight months, Whoa. and Spain was five. Yeah, so. Is France an expensive place to live in? Uh, probably now, not oh, at the oh, time oh. when I was going. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, yeah. So no, it was a great experience. I, you know, great, you know, for traveling and meeting new people, experiencing new cultures. Mm. So that's where I really liked. That's when I liked people. Mm. So. <laughs> You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Come on. No, you know what I mean. Maybe you don't. Anyway, I don't know what I mean. But no, I just, and this is before social media and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. everything was new. If you want, you know, I mean, mm. yeah, internet was around, but it was, it's not like now where you can see people going on vacation and instantly access things, right? Mm. So it was, it was a really great experience. And then I, li- I lived in Japan for two years after I graduated. So How was Japan? It was great. I went there with um, my husband, who's... At the time, we were just dating, but we lived there for two years. So, wait, uh, you said you leave there. Like, did you meet in Japan? Or? No, I met him here. Um, we were working, and I was already planning to apply to go to Japan. For what? Uh, uh, with the um, JET program, the Japanese Japanese Exchange and Teaching Program. They oh, have so that. you like went there to teach? And, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, to teach. And then he decided he would like to come with me, so... Whoa. I was like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It was like, come on. Why, why wouldn't you want to come, right? Anyway, so. How long ago was this? So now, this is a while ago. I don't okay. myself. No, no, but seriously, this was, we were there in 2000. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. For two okay. years. And so we've been together 20 years this fall. Wow. Yeah, we wow. just had our 
12th wedding anniversary. Wow. Oh, wait a second. What year is this? 2019? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We got married in 2007. Wow. Yeah. So uh, so you lived in Japan for two years. And how was that, living there? Um, it was It was different. So... You know, I had already experienced living in two other countries, mm. but I already spoke those languages when I moved there. Oh, yeah. I already spoke French. I already spoke Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So moving, and it was only eight months and five months. So moving to Japan, stayed for two years. I had a one-year contract, but I renewed it mm. for another year. Um, I didn't speak Japanese. So, but I, the reason why I wanted to go to Japan, I used to work out in Alberta at the Athabasca, uh, Athabasca Ice Field. Columbia Ice Field on the glacier, the Athabasca Glacier. And for two summers. Um, what would you do there? So I myself was a ticket agent. So I sold tickets for the tours. They do snow coach tours onto the glacier. Oh my. So we had tourists from all over, wow. all over. And we had a lot of Japanese tourists, right? Oh, okay. So I just became interested in the culture, just, mm. you know, meeting some of the Japanese tour guides. Mm. And I'd never been to Asia, so just Europe. So anyway, so I decided to go. So I did. And it was great, great experience. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I missed the trees. That was the one thing I missed. Which trees? Is trees. I what noticed, about the trees? Well, we have a lot of trees here. Mm. And where I was living, I was north of Tokyo, about an hour, hour and a half by train. There weren't a lot of trees in my in my town. So oh. it was a little depressing, like a lot of concrete. It was just really gray, you know? Wow. Yeah, it was, it's weird. You notice things like that. But then when I came back, I noticed how loud everybody is here, <laughs> especially in a public space like a restaurant. Yeah. So in Japan, you know, yeah, there's a few people at each table, but they're not talking this loud, first of all. They're, they're just, you know, talking like this and they're just maintaining the composed. <laughs> it's just different. And it's nice because you can hear the people you're with. And yeah. then you come back here, you know, sometimes when you're out. Like on a Friday, Saturday night, it's so loud. Like me. I'm, 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 loud, I'm loud too, but at a restaurant, I'm not loud when I'm at a table. And it still amazes me, like two tables over, I can clearly hear someone's conversation. One of the things we actually didn't talk about when you're introducing yourself is that you act. Yes. How did you get into acting? Uh, it was when I came back from Japan. Mm. And uh, I remember the first film that I was in, it was as a background performer, and it was Martha Stewart Inc. Oh, oh, yeah, with oh, Sybil about, Shepherd. About, yeah, about, about Martha Stewart's like, insider trading. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. So I was uh, one of the background people in that, and I played uh, a makeup artist. So, so any, anyway, it was fun, and I've always been interested in, in acting, and I like my personality. I like, you know, I'm creative. I, I used to write poetry in high school, and, um, you know, I like languages. I just like doing new things and new experiences. So anyway, I got into acting and um, I in eventually got my first credit to be in the Actors Union. And so now I'm, I'm a full member of ACTRA. Mm. And yeah, so uh, last thing I worked on was a student film for NASCAD that we shot in uh, December. And my daughter actually had a part on that as well. So she's She's also into acting as well, so it's yeah. Fun. Talking about your daughter, I think she didn't she make a film for the yes, uh, she did the the um Finn uh, kids the Finn kids yeah, film yeah. festival this year. Yeah, so she wanted to make a short film, so she had wanted to get together with a couple of friends, but you know the schedules didn't coincide. So I said to her, just do something on your own. So she wrote a little script about uh, her cat Coco and how her cat. It, basically it's called jazz amazing to the rescue so her cat gets a toy stuck on top of the cupboard and jasmine has to use her martial arts skills to get the cat to get the cat <laughs> toy down anyway and you know and the films are all under five minutes and yeah yeah so it's fun she got to go to the screening and see some of her film friends there and she had a great time wow yeah um, and the other thing we actually didn't talk about, and I think you didn't bring it up, yes, was because right. <laughs> well, you don't really do it anymore. Yes. Fitness competition. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So um, that, how did I even start? Okay. So that started when I first met Adam, Adam Allenbach. That's my husband. Yes. My name is Sandra Alamohana. We are married, but I kept my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, he was training for a bodybuilding show when we started going out. We started going out in October of 1999. And he was doing a show in 2000 in like the spring, April or March. Mm. 
So anyway, and I got to, you know, see glimpses of that and his diet and his training. And I just thought the whole thing was weird. And I remember going once to meet him at the gym and I walked in, he was just finishing out his workout and I didn't go to the gym at this point. And I walked in, I mean, when I was at dad, I'd go to the gym and just do some like, you know, circuit work or mm-hmm. track or whatever. And there was a lot of guys there, just like, you know, bigger guys, muscular guys, you know. And I was, I felt so out of place. I walked in <laughs> and I was just all like, what is this place? It was intimidating, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so I went to watch that show. And I remember thinking the whole experience was surreal to me because I'd never been around that or part of that world. Mm. And they had a category which was for couples. So it was mixed pairs, actually. So, and it was bodybuilders at the time. So one man, one woman doing they do a bodybuilding routine together and then Mm. they do mandatory poses anyway so we went to japan for two years came back and then i said to him hey we should do a show together sorry that's making a lot of noise (laughs) what did he like what did he think of uh, he he laughed at me he thought i was joking yeah i was like why is that funny because i was like a skinny little thing you know i didn't he's like you don't go to the gym i said so (laughs) i said because like you're serious i said it'd be fun something we could do together you know so we did. Um, I did my first show in uh, spring of 2004. Mm. And I competed in women's lightweight bodybuilding. And I remember it because my weight was 111.8 pounds. I was what? just under 112. Mm-hmm. That's light, light, light. Well, I had to be, it was just a weight category, not oh. a height category. Oh, I think okay. it was under 115. Oh, okay, okay. And okay. so I ended up being just under 112. Oh, okay. And I was the tallest one there. Mm. Anyway, I didn't place because I, you know, I didn't have a lot of muscle. I just started six months before that training. Mm. And then we did the couples category and we got third. And that was fun because we did it together. Mm. You know, it's just fun. And then from there, I just started training and uh, competing in um, women's figure. So uh, they didn't have women's bikini at the time. So I did figure for a few years. And then I had Jasmine in, in 2009. And then I came back in 2012, I think I came back. And I did figure one more time. And then I, I switched to bikini because my body shape was more inclined for the bikini look. And I didn't have that much muscle. So I um, switched to bikini, competed for a few years in that. And my last time competing was in 2016. Mm-hmm. I did three shows. Um, what? So I think wow. spring of 2016, uh, late April, early May. And then... Um, yeah, it was just three weeks later, the Atlantics was. I did the Atlantics, and then, but between the Atlantics and the Nationals show, it was about six weeks to two months. I forget exactly, but between six and two, six weeks to eight weeks time. Mm. So that was kind of hard for me because the first show and the second show were okay. It was only three weeks difference. Mm. Still, three weeks is kind of, but I took a week off. I didn't, I kind of like ate when I wanted, and then I said, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, and then... But by the time the third show rolled around, yeah. the only reason I really did it was because it was in Moncton. It was a national show. Mm. And my husband was going up there to be one of the judges anyway. So I was like, okay, might as well. Mm. So I did. and But I wasn't really into it. I didn't want to maintain that diet for another two months. Mm. So, But I still did okay. I, 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 I think I came in six out of 18 wow. so in the country. So it was pretty good. If mm. I reined it in a bit, I would have done better. But, you know my mental health was more important. So yeah. I think it should be. And I, you know, I did it and, um, still did okay. So I was happy with it. <laughs> Why did you decide to stop? Um, so I, so 2016, I did the three shows and mm. then I, I can't actually remember why I, I think I just, cause I did the three shows and that was a lot. I was like, I just want to take some time off. Mm. And, I don't know. I just started judging. So I got into that and I liked that. And, um, and then in the back of my head, I was like, Oh, I'll probably return eventually, but I still haven't. So I might, I might not (laughs) still haven't decided to be honest, but I still go to the gym and train and it's not as, you know, excessive now or as rigid the schedule. So Mm. it's kind of nice. I'm probably at the gym three to four times a week now. When you're doing competition, how many times? During competition myself, I would go five or six so pretty much I'd every us- day. Yeah, usually I would take one day off, mm. but mostly six. But usually one day would just be like cardio and stretching and things like that. And then, so. and then for those six days, what would you be doing at the gym? So, 
No, I'm trying to think. In 2016, I didn't have um, a coach. I've had a couple coaches in the past, so mm. they would, you know, tell me what to train. So they would send me the schedule and tell me what to eat. So it's kind of nice. You take the guesswork out of it. You just you're told to eat this, and then train this, and these are the exercises you do, and the, how many sets and reps and all that. Mm. But in 2016, I decided to do it myself. And, um, you know, I, I placed the best I ever have and mm. I looked the best I ever have and I felt the best like mentally and emotionally. So, you know, I did something right. So it worked for me. And so, for example, myself, um, like my husband would help me. So because uh, he's a judge as well and he's to, he's to compete in bodybuilding. Mm. And his last show was like 2008. And then mm. he never returned after we had Jasmine. I, I did, but he didn't. He just kept judging. And... Um, so for me, my upper body was my main focus because for balance, for my, the bikini category, shape and balance. And my lower body was very dominant. So I'm very muscular in my legs. And um, so I pretty much stopped training legs for a while. My husband told me to stop training legs. And it was weird for me because I was like, no, that's weird. Mm. I like training legs. He said, well, you have to for this and you just do cardio. Anytime you feel like doing legs, just do, do the spin bike or something. And it, you know, helped with the balance. And mm. um yeah, so basically work on your weak areas. But, I mean, these days a lot of people have um, professional coaches that mm. they hire. And especially if they're trying to do really well with nationals or win their pro card. And that's usually very ne necessary to hire a professional to help you with that. So what's a pro card? So a pro card, um, that would be with the CPA. There's there's two divisions now. Um, so the IFBB split off a couple of years ago. Um, and now there's the CPA, the Canadian Physique Alliance. And then the CBBF, the Canadian Bodybuilding Federation, mm. uh, which was the old IFBB. But anyway, the, the I, IFBB Pro Card is now through the CPA. So what was the question? Like, what is a Pro Card? <laughs> Thank you. So the Pro Card would be what someone would get to compete at a pro level. Oh. So like the um, the Olympia, for example. IFB, you're right. And Arnold's, you know. So, uh, yeah. And that would require a lot of dedication and you have to have you have to want it to, to get it do you know what I mean so basically you're not going to get your pro card if you're just doing it for fun or you know what I mean right it's mm. it's like serious like these athletes are serious the ones competing and trying to get their pro cards and and what what would be the advantage of getting a pro card like is that where you get sponsorships and stuff yeah, yeah. A, a lot of athletes will have a sponsorship without a pro card but oh, these okay. athletes will have competed um, probably at the national level or some inter international shows, mm. you know, consecutively. And they have the drive and that's their passion. They're trying to get a pro card. So some su supplement companies will sponsor them. Mm. And But once you turn pro, it's easier to get sponsorships. And then the pro uh, uh, competitions will offer usually top six, depending on the competition, some kind of monetary prize to go along with. Yeah, so... I actually, I need to ask this one question because sure. I always think about sponsorships, right? Is there money involved or is it just, oh, use our products? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Definitely at the pro level, there would be money involved. Oh, okay. Because like, yeah. fuck, man, if you're just like, oh, yeah. if I'm wearing your supplement thing and all I'm getting is just the yeah. fucking juice. What's exactly. Fuck <laughs> <Suck> it, right? <laughs> like, anyway, no, but like um, at the amateur level, so a lot of maybe local athletes mm. competing, some supplement companies will, depending, you know, just give them free product, mm. right? And then, you know, probably they would just get... Uh, shout outs on Instagram or mm. whatever their social media yeah you know? I mean sure those supplements are expensive mm -hmm. but you know I know <laughs> yeah you know if like um, if an athlete believes in that product and mm. you know some athletes like you know Instagram's like some are just trying to sell stuff they don't care <laughs> you know what I mean right like in general some people oh are like, I drink this supplement this yeah, is why I look they're like not this very, they're like oh sure I'll, or they might get some kind of payment from them right I mean I don't know I personally have never been sponsored mm. I you know I've had a couple people like approach me on Instagram I just I can't I can't I can't be bothered to deal with people yeah. like that I don't want to and mm. you know I'm not competing now anyway so I just do my own thing and I don't like to you know you know mm. what I mean? And mm. I'm not trying to get a pro card. I just was doing it to stay fit. And mm. something, I started out doing it as something like a hobby to do with my husband. Do you know what I mean? At the time we weren't married. But anyway, you mm. know, just mm, mm, mm. just to kind of like see what it was like. to. Yeah. And I'd never, I was never an athletic child growing up. I didn't do sports really and I wasn't very good at it. Uh, 
So, so it was kind of cool going to the gym and mm -hmm. learning how to train and then seeing your body transform. Mm -hmm. and then... So um, now that you're, you've been away for, what, three years now, pretty yep. much? Uh, do you see yourself ever doing it again? You know, <laughs> I did say in the back of my head, you know, I'd like to uh, do it again and then, you know, get a trainer for maybe the last eight weeks and just really dial me in physically just to see scientifically how my body can transform and get the leanest it can. Because my issue was, um, like most women, we hold a lot of our body fat in the lower body, like glutes down. But I never was that serious or focused enough with my diet and or training to get that lean. Mm. So like my last show I competed in 2016, I was 116 pounds mm. for the national show. And I came in sixth. And now it's not necessarily a weight thing. It's how you look. Everyone, you know, looks differently. But for me, and I knew my husband even said, if you were like about five pounds leaner, you, you would probably made top three. And I know I would have, right? Mm. Because my legs would have come out. But... You know, it's kind of insane to think about, oh, competing at 111 pounds, I'm five foot six. That's a weird, mm. that's a weird weight. My high school weight was 117 pounds. Mm. So like, it's like a mind fuck, you know what mm. I mean? So, and I didn't want it that bad. And my husband, he even said my competitions in 2016, that was the best I've ever looked, the best I've ever felt. Mm. And, and around the house, like what? the best I, I've acted with him and, mm. and our daughter. Cause you can get really cranky when you're, <laughs> when because, you got no sugar in your body. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it can take a toll on relationships. I've seen it happen <laughs> to people. So the, I guess with those uh, competitions, mm -hmm. I mean, sure, there's a lot of lifting involved, but it really boils down to kind of your dieting, right? Yes, definitely. So, um, yeah, your diet has to be on point. Mm. And that's why a lot of people hire, uh, athletes will hire a coach because they want to take the guesswork out of it. And a lot of it, it's very scientific. It comes down to your macros, like, mm. you know, much carbs and fats and protein you're eating. Mm. And every body is different. Yeah. You know, I've had different types of diets and different types of cardio training. And I've learned what works for me. And that's why I was able to do it myself 2016. And I did well. I, I came in second mm. provincially and second at Atlantic's. And then sixth, you know, out of 18 in the country. So that was great. Mm. So, you know, but for people first starting out or if they're really serious and trying to get their pro card, it's almost necessary to get the proper training and coaching, especially with your diet, because you don't want to mess with that. So, mm. and it's, it's a lot of work because you're doing your meal prep, you're weighing, you know, I had the food scale, you're weighing your food or mm. portioning it out with, you know, the cups or whatever. <laughs> and it's yeah and drinking so much water it. yeah yeah it's very rigid yeah and then and then you know you get if people aren't in it you know at, at the beginning my family would say oh you know you're so skinny oh is that healthy it's like you know what fuck off you can't really say <laughs> fuck off to your family you know, i mean you know <laughs> you say it in a nice way i suppose but yeah. then i just stopped telling people sometimes That's i was competing true. yeah it's just you know, and I've, I've actually said to someone before and not a family member, just like an acquaintance, they were asking me. And I think honestly, they were curious, mm. you know, about the process. And this is someone who didn't train or go to the gym or any, knew, knew anything about fitness shows or bodybuilding shows. Mm. And I was just kind of like cranky, you know, cause like, I don't, anyway. And then she was asking me all these questions I was answering. Then finally I just said to her, listen. I'm not here to educate you. I know it sounds kind of mean, but I was like, you can go online and look it up. I said, let me just eat my chicken and rice, like and my broccoli. <laughs> like, I don't see why it's an issue. Like sometimes they'd make a comment. I'm like, I'm not commenting on, you know, that 35 gram sugar yeah. of brownie you're eating right now. You know, and, I would say, and then I don't think they realize that. Then they kind of shut up, right? You know what I mean, right? Yeah. And it just gets annoying after a while. So it, it, kinda, about, it can be reclusive. Yeah, talking about your diet, right? Um, there's this clip that you showed me about kind of this competition you do so we're just gonna watch that and then okay. we'll come back and talk about okay it. cool please welcome Sandrella Mohana and that's the first time I ever seen one of those hold it up hon hold it up Wow, I mean, 
okay, it's superficial. <laughs> Let's <laughs> call call a spade a spade. It, that's exactly what it is. So, but what do you think um, is the inspiration for that level of discipline, though? Hmm. For myself personally, yes. I can only speak to myself. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, you know, I think part of it is for me mm. trying trying to beat what I look like at a past competition, mm. trying, you know, to do better, to get, you know, have a little more muscle, come in leaner. That was always my issue, not coming in lean enough. Mm. Um, because I'm a big sugar person. I always have been <laughs> since I was a kid. My parents used to own a corner store. Oh, okay. And they never said no, pretty much. <laughs> so I'm kind of okay. surprised I don't have type 2 diabetes, but that's another story. I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't. But anyway, yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, I think it's just the discipline and like, because, you know, growing up, I was never really told no when it came to food. Like, mm. yeah, you can eat that, you know, because my mom always did healthy home cooked Lebanese food. So, mm. which is very healthy. So we rarely had fast food or anything. So balanced, I used to walk to and from school and all that stuff. So balanced it out. Right. Mm. But, and then having to do, you know, a competition diet, which can be really restrictive, especially mm. towards like the last eight weeks or so. Eight weeks. Well, the, my di no, like most people, I would diet like twelve to sixteen weeks out. Holy smokes! Twelve is pushing it. Sixteen weeks out, so most people will do. If I were to compete again, I would definitely do a longer, slower diet, maybe oh, twenty weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you kind of start dialing out a little bit, but but the last yeah. week is the last week really crazy. Uh, it can be mm. like if you're doing like bodybuilding, they do a lot of that water and sodium manipulation and all that. Now I did that in the past, like a long time ago, but, um, in 2016, I didn't, I didn't do anything different for my last week. Cause I had, I had done that in the past mm. and it didn't work out once. And I remember, and it was really weird. So I, I, I looked better <laughs> like three days before my show. Yeah. Yeah. It was awful. So I looked good the week before mm. I looked like how I want to look on stage. So why am I going to mess with that? Mm. Cause your body it's it can do something weird if it's thrown off, off what it's, you know, it's courses. Mm. It's been used to this for the past, like two, three months. Now mm. you're doing something different and might react differently, especially with women, yeah. with their hormones and stuff. Right. And stress, stress, stress is a big thing for me as well. And my husband noticed when I'm not stressed, my body, my body reacts better yeah. to what I'm doing. So I just left it the same. Uh, and I looked okay. great. And like I said, I placed the best I ever did. So I wouldn't mess with that. And what is kind of, is this particular sequence for the whole show? Like Yeah. So usually they would have um, pre-judging in the, in the morning. It would take a couple hours, depending how many athletes there are. And they would just judge by category. So, you know, categories would be, depending, they might not have certain categories if the athletes aren't you know, mm. applying. So men's bodybuilding, which will go by weights, um, women's bodybuilding. These days, the numbers are so low, they j just have an open category. So they might have, if they're lucky, two or three competitors competing, open bodybuilding. Mm. So all weights together. And then they would have women's physique, um, men's physique, men's classic physique, uh, women's figure, women's bikini, women's fitness. Uh, men's fitness is offered, but usually people don't apply for that. So... Mm. And then there's usually like teenage categories. Like if you're a teen, you can enter in that class. And then mm. a master's or grandmaster's, depending on your age, 35 plus, 45 plus, depending. Uh. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the prejudging, basically, the athletes will come out in their class. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the judges will, usually there's a head judge. And they will call out um, the athletes to do their mandatory poses. So bikini would just be front and back. And then um, once they're all done, the head judge will call out the top five or top six, depending how many people are in the class. Mm. And usually by five. So it's first top five, we'll, we'll judge them. And then they go off. And then the next top, you know, so judging from six to ten. And then until um, all the athletes are judged. And, and then the numbers are tallied by the uh, software system, whatever. And in the evening, it's just the finals. The athletes come on, do their personal presentation and... Um, you know, usually in the evening, that's when the family and friends will come to watch. Mm. Some will come in the daytime as well, but it can be a little longer. Well, actually, no, nighttime shows longer because of the routines and stuff, but it's more technical in the morning with the judging. So, mm. and I, I've judged as well. So, uh, in the evening, we're just judging basically for overall. So, mm. which is, so you say there's three high classes 
for bikini. Oh, there's more than that usually, but let's just say there's five high classes for bikini. Mm -hmm. And the first first competitor, you know, the winner from each high class at the end will come back on stage. So we're judging all the different high classes now for bikini to pick the best. So the overall, right, mm. winner. So, yeah. And then, um, so that, that would be the process. There's an intermission in the middle and uh, usually there's sponsors set up outside, you know, selling their stuff and mm. and uh, photographer usually is there taking stage, professional stage shots and backstage shots for the athletes if they want to purchase that. Mm. And yeah, and it's pretty good, so. And the tanners are on site usually. Oh yeah, so the like, tanning. Pss. Yeah, the spray tan. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a that's an interesting thing because you're naked there and you're just. I mean, you got the little booth, the little tent. But... Wait, wait. So um, you're saying this thing seems like it goes all day. Yeah. Do they change little... outfits during the day um, or? Well, so like, some. I mean, some girls, you know, might have two different bikinis if they're doing two different classes, like a high class and maybe like an age category if they want to look different for the photos. Mm. Some won't. So yeah, you're just doing it in the daytime and then you'll have a few hours between the morning and night show and then you come back in the same outfit. You know, I would just keep, I just kept mine on all day because of the tan and then you're really careful when you're using the washroom. Yeah, you know, I mean, the level of discipline that goes into what you do is amazing. And I'm wondering like for my last question, what advice would you give someone that wants to maintain that level of discipline for mm -hmm. whatever they might be passionate about? Mm -hmm. um, I would say it can be hard to keep the focus and the discipline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say just try to do research as much as you can about what it is that you're passionate about. So you, the, I found the more I knew about something, the more control I had over it in mm -hmm. a sense, you know. Um, and then you can only take, you know, small steps, really. The end goal can be very daunting and seem mm. so far away mm. and like it can't be realized. But if you take small steps and just hold yourself accountable and, you know, just check things off, mm. you know, that's all you can really do. You can't really every, I mean, we all have it. It's human nature to beat ourselves up over it. Right. So, mm. but, and find a good support system. I think oh, it's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think of the support system. Oh my God. System, yeah. Like, especially in competing, I've seen, oh yeah, people like it, 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 it's very hard, you know? Mm. So especially if you have one partner that competes and the other one never has and doesn't really understand, under, hasn't gone through it. So my husband, he had gone through it before. And then when I started and then he stopped, he knew, you know, so he's, and he's very patient. So he's, he's like the opposite of me, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> For someone like me, <laughs> when I'm dieting down and even crankier or yeah. really short tempered, so he, he just lets it roll off his back. He knows it's not him, you know. He just just let it go. He knows to let certain things go, right? Which is great. So he's a great support. So yeah, and just uh, you know, try to keep keep your focus and just if it's something you're really passionate about, you're going to do it regardless. Mm. Just try not to beat yourself up over it if you don't get what you thought you were going to get is like for competitors if they they put their heart and soul into it they followed everything their their coach told them their diet their training and then they might they really want first place but mm. they might get second or third and second and third is really good but i've seen people come in second or third and, th and then they just they're just crushed you know wow mm -hmm. mm. And you don't want that okay funny story yeah uh, I got first at the 2016 provincials here. Mm. I got first place and then it got snatched away from me. Why? <laughs> it was okay. This is why it's a funny story. This is what happened. So it was during um, the evening presentation and the, you know, the top three were announced and it was in um, my open class. So, which was just a height based category. So it was up, up to five, six, which mm. is, you know, anyway, um, and they announced third place. That was the that was the class. I wasn't sure how I placed. Mm -hmm. There were six of us because I was the most muscular one there, and I was thinking I might be in the middle, like I might get third or I might not get anything. It was one of those things. That's what I thought, right? Mm -hmm. They called third place. It wasn't my name. They called second place. It wasn't my name. I was thinking, oh, I must have gotten fourth. Mm -hmm. They called first place. It was my name. Okay. I was like, what? That's awesome. I've never gotten first place. I, but in my in my head, because I judged already. In my head, I was like, I don't think I'm first. Like, mm. based, I mean, on stage, you know, the girls look different than if I'm sitting for my judge's seat. But mm. still, you get a good sense. I was like, and then I looked down at the panel of judges and a couple of them were like, 
<laughs> and, and they looked confused. And I was like, that's not a good sign. <laughs> and then I was like a seasoned competitor. I'd competed several years already. So, mm. but I was just imagining, had that been my first or second show, I would have mm. been like, oh my God, like what, what, what like, I don't, why are they having that reaction? So mm. when, especially when I saw that, I knew, and I went backstage and then the president came to, came by of the association and, and she knocked on the door. She's like, Sandra Ellis, oh, you're in here. I said, yeah. And she didn't even have to say anything. She's like, I need to talk to you. And I looked at her, I said, oh, you want your trophy back, don't you? <laughs> and she looked at me, she's like, oh, she goes, I'm sorry, that's okay. I said, if I don't, I if, if it was a so mis- so was it like uh, it nothing that happened? No, it was just like an error in the in the stats. Yeah, and the way the papers were sorted, it got, it, right? So That's I gave what... it back, right? Oh, because man. I I mean I'm thinking of it from an athlete's point of view. I'm like I don't want it if it, I don't deserve it. Mm. And then um, and then I was thinking, and then my husband came backstage too because he was one of the judges or stats guy or whatever at the time, and I. I said to him, I was like, well, thanks a lot. You give your wife first place and then you take it away. He's like, I'm sorry. He looked like his face <laughs> fell. Like he, but I was fine with it, right? And I said, just tell me how I did because they made the girls go back on stage and, and redistribute the trophies. I said, just mm. tell me before I go so I know in case I don't get a placing, I don't show my disappointment. Because you know what I mean, right? I want to be all like... And then he told me, he's like, actually, you got second. I said, oh, okay, that's fine. So I knew... Yeah. So it was it was bad though. I felt bad because I ended up getting the first time I got first, and then the girl who got second and third, they actually didn't even place. What they the... weren't they weren't top three. So I was actually second, and then the girl who got like fourth or fifth was actually first. Oh man, that's and then a another big girl ass was, mistake. So I felt bad for that. Oh, oh man, I know. Yeah. And, and and one of the girls was okay, but the other girl I'd lose my shit. One of the girls was not. Happy and her mom, I think, even said something to the judge. <laughs> I'd lose my and shit. she was angry. But yeah. I mean, it hap- It happens. It's, but I mean, they caught it right away. Mm-hmm. It, it's unfortunate. It happened. It didn't. They didn't catch it before they presented the trophies. But think of it this way, you know, they could have just let it slide and mm. say, you know what, they all look great. Just leave them that way. But then think of it this way: I got first, mm. but I was really second, and. My husband was on the judging panel. Mm. And if it came out later, oh, Disney they just clothes, left it because uh... she was really supposed to, you know. So that shows integrity, I think. Yeah, I mean, he does. And he was actually happy it was me because he knew I wouldn't be all, like, what crazy. Like, it, it, it was better better the first place was taken from from me because I've competed so many times. And I'm a judge, so I know, I know these things happen mm. than one of the competitors, right? Oh, and I man. felt bad for the competitors. I've been there where I thought I I was going to place better and I didn't, and I was really angry. I we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the older you get, the more you're like, just let it. Just what can you do? It's out of control. Yeah, the judges are going to judge the way they do. Yeah. And mm, it kind of reminds me of two things with the Oscars. The best picture was called for one, and then with Miss World or whatever. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. What's his name? Steve Harvey yes. called the wrong person. Someone said that to me after. They said, "Oh, you got Steve Harvey, didn't you?" I said, "Yeah, it's, it's okay. It happens." But you know what? I still got the photos with my first place trophy. <laughs> the photographer said, that. "So I was happy. I didn't care. It was nice, you know." Oh wow. Okay, that's an amazing story to end the podcast. Then. It was funny. Thank you very much for coming in, Sandra. Thank you for having me. It was great. This is the Blackout Podcast. Thanks for listening.